أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So in this session we are going to talk about nature of hypothesis. Now a hypothesis can be relational or it can be differential. So when we are assessing relationship between two variables we can call it a relational hypothesis. For example let's say there is a hypothesis there is a significant impact of CSR corporate social responsibility on organizational performance now this hypothesis is a relational hypothesis why is it called a relational hypothesis it's called a relational hypothesis because we are assessing the impact of one variable on another variable and we are assessing whether change in one variable may lead to change in another variable so you have a criterion variable which is organizational performance and you have a predictive variable csr and we are interested in assessing the impact of csr on organizational performance now although we have mentioned it that it is a relational hypothesis but the word that we have used is impact so is there a difference or both are the same thing now impact actually starts with the relationship there will be no impact of one variable on another variable unless or until they have a relationship so if you've got a relationship only then you will have an impact so your relationship or the relationship between two variable maybe three variables or whatever the number is it actually leads to impact and when we are testing hypothesis in business studies we normally write the word or use the word impact influence or such words now all these words actually communicate that we are interested in assessing the relationship between two variables in this case the two variables are csr and organizational performance now if you've got such hypothesis the tests that we normally use are regression analysis now this regression analysis may be performed using spss or any structural equation modeling software like smart pls or amos or maybe any other software now there is another form of hypothesis that hypothesis is differential now in differential hypothesis we are actually looking or assessing the differences in a particular variable the focus is on assessing differences in a particular variable now for example let me give you an example there is a significant difference in csr initiatives between public and private sector organizations now in this case with this hypothesis our interest is assessing the differences in csr initiatives and we are assessing the differences in csr initiatives between public and private sector organizations now there is one variable called csr because we are assessing the differences in csr initiatives so this is your dependent variable this is your dependent variable but when whenever you are assessing a or whenever you are conducting or testing a hypothesis there are there are dependent variables and independent variables now in this case we know that this is our independent variable and this is our dependent variable so what are the dependent or independent variables in this case so the variable that you are checking the differences in is your dependent variable whereas your categorical variable or grouping variable that actually you are using to create groups to assess the differences in is your independent variable now in this case your type of organization is your independent variable 
whereas csr initiatives is your dependent variable now let me give you another example for both of them let's say i've got another example there is a significantly positive impact of servant leadership on project success now in this case project success is your dependent variable because this is being influenced and your servant leadership is your independent variable another example of differential hypothesis there is a significant difference or we can change the form there are significant differences in organizational commitment between female and male employees now in this case what is your dependent variable your dependent variable is organizational commitment and your independent variables are independent variables or variable in this case it is a variable that is gender and that has got two categories male and female so you are assessing the differences in organizational commitment between male and female so your grouping variable is gender in this case your independent variable is gender and your dependent variable is organizational commitment so this is how you formulate your differential hypothesis and this is how you formulate your relational hypothesis we have already said that we are going to use regression based tests or analysis for our relational hypothesis how are we going to test our differential hypothesis now in order to explain this let's say you have got one dv you've got you have one dependent variable and an independent variable an independent categorical variable with two categories in this case what are we going to do is we are going to use independent sample t test or we are going to use man whitney u test so which one are we going to use are we going to use this one or are we going to use this one now when the assumptions are met there are certain assumption now every test that we do in spss or any other software there are certain assumptions that should be met now if we meet the assumptions or if our data actually meets these assumptions then we are going to use independent sample t test which is a parametric test what are those assumptions for example normality of data that your data is normally distributed so if your data is not normally distributed then you cannot use a parametric test or let's say if your dependent variable is not on interval and ratio scale you cannot use independent sample t test so your dependent variable has to be in on has to be on interval or ratio scale that that means that it has to be numerical now you use man whitney u test when you are or when you have data that is non parametric and your dependent variable is on ordinal scale what if i've got one dependent variable and an independent variable with more than two categories let's say three categories in this case we are going to use one way anova if it satisfies the assumptions or otherwise we are going to use kruskal wallis h test so any test that you use will always be dependent on the nature of the data and the assumptions that it satisfies for example let's take another example let's say you want to compare the data from a sample towards a population let's say we normally hear that okay there are like the per capita income of pakistan is 1200 dollars now i want to check this 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 claim that yes whether or not the 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 per capita income of pakistan is 1200 dollars or not so i go out and take data from maybe let's say 200 people 
now I want to compare that sample with the population mean. So what's the population mean? It's $1,200. That's your test value. Now you, now you want to compare the sample mean with the population mean. So in this case, you are going to use one sample t-test. So one sample t-test is used when you want to compare the sample against a population. If you are interested in assessing the differences between two groups or three groups or maybe more or you are interested in assessing the com or comparing the sample with the population, you are going to use these particular tests. Thank you very much.